and welcome back to Let's Fly VFR. Today I'm going to take you through getting more performance out of your system by overclocking the CPU. This is not a painless exercise, it does take a bit of time and the reason I'm going for the software option to get us started today is that's the simplest version. Once you've worked out exactly what you can and you can't do, then you can go back to the BIOS and you can set your settings within the BIOS itself and then, then make it permanent and save it there. So let's start, let's see what we can get out of this system and I'll see you in a moment. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All in X Plane 11. Props, jets, and much more. All done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. Well, if you're going to do some overclocking, you need some tools, don't you? So we don't need any hammers or screwdrivers, but we do need some software. AMD Overdrive puts together a really good package for overclocking your CPU and your GPU should you have an AMD uh, graphics card as well. The second tool that's very handy to have is Core Temp here on the top right hand side. This will show you your speed of your CPU, it will show you the load, it will show you the maximum and minimum temperatures and your TJ Max so you don't want to be exceeding the 70 degree C. So that's a really good tool. And the third tool, which is also free, is Task Manager. Now everyone's got one. So if you go to it and you click on the Performance tab here, that will show you the CPU usage because that's what we're interested in at the moment. It can show you other things. It can show you your GPU usage, your Wi-Fi and your memory usage and other things. But um, and if you're looking to see what uh, memory your current game, whatever it might be, is using, if it's x -Plane or something else, you can see how much is required. But the CPU is what we're going to look at today. So what you don't want is to see it come up to max and then at some point spike downwards and come back up again. That's the one thing you don't want because that gives you those judders and those FPS drops in game and that gets you killed, doesn't it? We all know that. So... Let's have a quick run through here quickly. The information you can get on your status monitor, you can have a look at your CPU, you can see what it's running at. Mine's currently running at 4.3. I'm using the um, the stock overclock that the system has. It comes in at one gig and sort of bumps up to one point, uh, sorry, comes in at four gig, jumps up to uh, 4.1-ish and comes back down. It sort of hovers in there normally. Um, if you use the X-Boost feature that the motherboard has, that brings it up to 4.3. Um, and surprisingly, the voltage sits down here at 1.275. Um, it can go up to 1.45, um, but it runs really well here. So look at the results when we get uh, into the back of the uh, video. So GPU status, you can see that there. If you have one, it will be able, you'll be able to see that. You can see your overall, your board status, your CPU, temperatures and everything are all there and available. Your uh, frequencies here, so memory frequency, you can see what it's doing here at the moment. I'm not real sure about my memory frequencies. I don't think that number is relevant, so that's something I've got to look at. I have tried to overclock it just recently, so that's another uh, video though, once I know what I'm doing with that. Um, so down here, if you're going to do some overclocking, you can grab this and you can just slide uh, your cores up. You can slide your reference, your multiplier up. A lot of people like to just do multiplier overclocking. So um, that's better, than, you know, it's simpler than moving the core multipliers. They use the, the HT bridge multiplier from there. Now you have uh, other items here that we can't play with. We can only play with these two. We can move the voltage up as we need, but you want to be careful. You need a good cooling solution to be able to do that. Um, I would recommend a really good air cooler or you want something like the Evo 212 um, or something to that equivalent. Um, you can use a pair of fans. You can do push-pull on it to improve its performance. The depth of that cooler is also something that's going to determine how well it works and then airflow through your case you want air to become in through the front of your case work its way through and then head out 
uh, that sort of fairly ideal situation. If you're using an uh, all-in-one cooler, a water cooler, then again, they're, they're a lot better because you don't have to have the air moving around, the hot air from the CPU that's just been cooled, uh, maintained within the case. It goes straight out through the exhaust port, essentially, um, out where your fan is, and your fan will probably either go onto the top if you've got places for it, or on the rear of your um, of your box, so you can put it in there. So that's all you're doing. You're moving this and you're moving that, or you can just move the HT multiplier and you can move this to get it stable. Memory, um, that's another uh, something for another video. Uh, there's a couple of different types of profiles. This is for your memory. Um, they're just predetermined profiles that you can download and if you have the appropriate type of RAM that's, um, that this will talk to, this program, then you can do that. Here you can have your uh, fan speeds. You can manually adjust those if you have a number of fans. You can do that here. Smart profiles. These are for stock voltages. And again, CPU, um, CPU uh, profiles that you can load up here. Then you can come down to the benchmark. We'll have a look at one of those in a moment, but you need to know hey is if you've overclocked it are you actually getting some more performance so you've got this tool and the one that i use in a moment is cinebench uh, which will do both your video card on one test and it will do your cpu on the other stability here you want to be able to select all and then hit the start feature and then these will all run green and run and if it goes well you'll see no error messages down here if it detects any sort of issues that it thinks is not and the thing is unstable, uh, it will just stop. And uh, most of the time, it doesn't even lock your system up or anything. So it's really good. It is really good. Uh, the last one I'm going to talk about is the overclock feature here. This will um, automatically overclock your system. Simple. It's as simple as that. You sit here, you hit the OK button. Oh, sorry, you hit the Start button, and then sit back and watch it. Watch your temperatures here, but they won't exceed here because the system knows already what it's allowed to do. So now it's a pretty smart way of doing it, I think. Um, a lot of people s shout from the high towers, you know, don't use software. This is a good place to start. The end result though, is you just move these settings and there's a few other settings that you can do within your motherboard, depending on what you have, to, uh, to transfer it and make it permanent at that point. And that's the recommended way. But if you just want to see how well you can do it, and is it stable, if you do it here, and you don't apply it, you can make it work, and then if it uh, locks up on you, when you restart the system, you'll go back to where you were. So you can be confident you're not going to hurt yourself. Okay, so there we are. We have AMD Overdrive core temperature for monitoring your temps and we'll see this one in action uh, pinned to 100% but there's going to be a situation where it drops and uh, again then we know our overclock isn't uh, isn't what we want it to be the numbers may look pretty but it's not good enough okay so let's get into having a look at some overclocks that I've done and here's the first one we're starting here with uh, stock setup just so we've got a basis to work from and from here we'll do uh, a minor overclock, we'll use the uh, the X boost that uh, comes with this particular system and, uh, and then we'll have a look at a bit of a, a bigger overclock and see how that fares. So this is the basic one, this is running pretty well. Um, you can see a whole range of previous overclocking sessions that we've done here on the left hand side. So under the CPU and just a note we see the OpenGL up the top of the page there you can actually do your um, GPU as well so you can do that and do some overclocking and see how that works um, that gives you a uh, cartoon of a couple of cars uh, hoofing through a city and see how many frames you get so this one's done pretty well if you look over at the core temperature you can see that the load has remained at 100% the speed has remained uh, at its 3.9 if you like to, to 4 and it's it's remained pretty steady the score's not too bad that's at uh, what 618 so let's move along to another overclock so this one is with the X boost running so this gives us a 4.3 gig and to be honest I'm going to give it away but this seems to be the best one for my system and it's all down to cooling and, and individual system requirements but mine doesn't cool well enough and I think I may have lost out in the old um, silicon lottery a bit as well. It's a bit of a, 
you know, it's not a very good one. But the score was pretty good there. So certainly a lot better. So and this is going into a bit of a manual overclock. And we're just seeing whether we can make any changes to make it any better at all. So let's see how this one goes. This is uh, now I believe this is 4.5 gig is what we try to do here. So let's see how this one works out on its own. Now it's really crucial if you can get the task manager up when you're watching this so you can check again once we start. They do disappear but just grab them off your taskbar and you see it's gone up to 100% okay so it's sitting up there now this is an alternate at uh, so we had 4.5 so I've done the I've just added this is reading what it's getting from the BIOS uh, down on the CPU but it's actually 4.5 gig now you can see it's running at 100% now let's see how we go here does it back off normally towards the end of this test if it's going to uh, clock down or get too hot um, that's normally when it happens so and it's really effective because it's only a short test of a, a couple of minutes and you get an indication of uh, how it's going so so far so good getting towards the end oh and you can see it's dropped off so that overclock setup there isn't any good it's either the VRMs or something's decided that uh, it's not going to keep up. It needs to cool off. And then we've gone through and it's finished. So nearly made it to the end, but not quite. Maybe backing off the um, the voltage just a little bit there might assist that one in actually getting through. So here we are. We're doing 4.4 gig. And uh, what are we doing on the volts? So we, we've backed the volts off a little, 1.3375. So let's see if this one gets through and then what the scores are like. So we get a couple of decent scores at 660 something. Um, that's certainly fine. The 628 or whatever it was, which was the initial one, that's the stock. So you can see that we're getting an improvement. And that's going to help you in game, no matter what game you're playing. So it's doing well. Let's just keep a track of the uh, the performance and see if it does drop off towards the end. Nearly at the end, it's doing okay. Just a few to go and it's finished. But you can see that the, the result is pretty poor. So there's some issues with the way that overclock's gone. So you can see um, some of the lower ones are better. Now you, if you spend a bit more time doing it, adjusting your, your voltages, uh, that might only just a little bit more voltage. And I think I'll give it, I'm going to give it one more go and see if it improves. So one more quick one run through and we'll see whether this one gets any better. So a quick run through. But the beauty of this is it is so quick. As you can see there, we're coming up with just 4.3. So I've backed off the, um, the frequency just a little bit and we'll see that we get through and see if the result is any better, worse, or if it just works out at a par around that 660. If you've got something like the, the new AMD chips, they're all, you know, well over seven and the, um, the, inst what's it, the uh, instructions per second, uh, or the IPC, or it is, um, that the uh, Intel chips have um, is certainly better. You know, it does get more instructions per cycle, IPC, there we go. Remember what it is. Now, we're doing all right here. I'll stop babbling about that. And let's see how this goes. We're doing good. We haven't dropped off anywhere yet. It's remained flat out. And okay, so that's working out well. It's come out. Now, what was the result? A 643, you can see up there, CPU. So it's got a bit better, but it's still not the 460. So let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.